Welcome to Digital Asset News, take top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we have some, some good stories and also some quite scary stories. First up, crypto traders should brace for Bitcoin drop ahead of halving according to two top analysts and Ivan on Tech, prominent YouTuber was suspended by YouTube again amid new crypto sanctions also. CEO of Tron, Justin Sun, was interviewed by CNN. I wasn't going to include this at all in today's episode, but there was three things that he said that is directly related to Ivan on Tech and price action, which will also lead us into the scam of the day, which we'll go over at the very last part. But let's get into today's stories. So first up, crypto traders are talking about how the Bitcoin halving leading up to it will lead to a massive drop in Bitcoin price. And it states, Tr trader and technical analyst Rekt Capital, first of all, that's a horrible name, says the king of crypto has a tendency to correct prior to the halving event that will cut the number of Bitcoins generated in every block in half as Bitcoin creeps towards its finite supply of 21 million coins. The time of publishing, there are about 78 days. Yeah, about 78 days. We're looking at uh, less than three months or so uh, until the next halving. According to Rekt Capital, <laughs> in the 100 days before Bitcoin's first halving, the cryptocurrency plunged 50%. In the run-up to the second halving, it dropped 38%. So I was curious and I was like, well, is that true? So if we take a look at when actually the Bitcoin halving occurred, we had the first halving on November 28, 2012, and the second halving of July 9, 2016. So if we take a look at the price charts, and to go back that far uh, to uh, 2012, you have to use a chart from 99 bitcoins. Uh, coin market cap will not go back that far, so you have to use a specialized chart, which if you want to check out 99 bitcoins, I'm going to link in the description below. So first of all, <clears throat> the first halving happened on November 28, 2012. So if we take a look at that, so here was the price around right here or so. Um, $12.51. So you can see before that, it looked pretty stable actually. Uh, there was a little bit of dips and, and valleys here and there. So from October, went from $11 to $10.35, which if you think about it, like, well, that's not that bad. But if you look at the percentage wise, it is quite a dip. And then all the way back here uh, on August 16, 2012, it went from $13 all the way to $9. So yes, there have been dips. But the big thing I want to note here is that as this went forward looking at from the first having November 28th 2012 going forward until the all-time high which happened about a year later or so you're just looking at a nice big fat increase as it went up and up and up and not too bad of a bull run right so let's take a look at the second one the second having was on July 9th, 2016. So puts us around right here at $648. And you can see before that, pretty stable, um, nice little peaks and valleys. Actually, pretty flat right here. And it just kind of just ran up, boom, boom, boom. And it was at $751.99 on June 18th, 2016. So we're looking at uh, about three weeks before. And then it just kind of just dropped to the floor, the 592. So from 756 to 592, that's a huge drop. And I think that is what starts to shake out the weak hands, as they call them. But if you're here in this time frame, that is not you. You know exactly what's going to happen. And of course, what happens after these halvings, which happened on, let's see, let's say July around there there might be a little drop like it happened here but look what happens afterwards do 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 and we have a nice little uh, run up and here we go however taking a look here from March down to the 25th wow look at that March 5th to March 25th it went from 1300 to 900 dollars uh, 935 that's a drop but if you could stick around you're gonna have this nice big parabolic run. The big thing though is, when do you get out? Uh, when is your positions? Because if you listen to all the Bitcoin maximalists, it's all about hodl this and hodl that and make sure that you don't ever get out. And that's just the wrong strategy. At some point, you're going to have to take profits. Okay, You cannot just let this go because who knows? Who knows what could happen with Bitcoin and any cryptocurrency digital asset? It could go to zero. We have no idea. So to make sure that you're not wrecked 
<laughs> wrecked capital. Um, definitely, as you go through this, start to take profits somewhere along the way. If you're looking for an exit strategy, I'm going to link that at the end of this video where I talk about my price positions and exit strategies and uh, how I am going to make sure that I don't screw up like I did in the last um, big bull run of 2017. If you can take your positions, do a percentage, dollar cost average in, dollar cost average out, it's the safest route. Let's move on. Next up, I went on tech suspended on YouTube. And this is one of those scary stories that uh, we just had this issue not more than two or three months ago. There, YouTube was suspending different cryptocurrency YouTubers. But here we go again. The suspension, which will also block one of the most influential daily live streams, because uh, Ivan on Tech does live streams, he also does daily videos, will last until after the Bitcoin halving. So interesting stuff. The question, the content in question was a price prediction for Bitcoin saying that Bitcoin's price is going vertical. So that was his content. Maybe that was in the actual title or in the description. Who knows? Bitcoin's price going vertical. And that seems reasonable to me. He didn't say like Bitcoin is going to go to a million dollars tomorrow. That's, you know, that's crazy. But uh, it goes on to state that at the time of publishing, Bitcoin was indeed going upward. Actual charts may have corresponded to the message. Other vloggers affected include Enter the Crypto Matrix, never heard of him, Chico Crypto, and older count Da Vinci. Da Vinci is one of those guys who is from like way old school. He's the OG. He's the one that uh, predicted Bitcoin would go to, you know, past 10,000 when it was like 200 bucks. So, yeah. Rumors are circulating about banned content based on attacking certain blockchains. Negative comments about the EOS blockchain, which I did just a couple of videos ago, where Coinbase had called out EOS and said, hey, there's something wrong. There's some irregularities with the uh, platform. And uh, this is just a documented case. But it was also rumored to be a reason for flagging content. Crypto communities may thus be one of the factors in a wave of flags and bans. So before we move on, let me just ask you this. What do you think is the reason for these bans and these suspensions and these suppressions? Curious to know what you, say, what you think. Put it in the comments below. Moving on, reports also service that certain phrases and types of commentary lead to bans. One of the title topics include any titles about coronavirus, which leads to demonetization in the least of cases. Some of the content from years back may also be flagged. And this is this also happened with Chico Crypto as well. I think he had a video from like two years ago, and uh, it was like uno, dos, tres, adios, he was gone. Um, and he was had to like fight to get his channel back. But just so you know, Google and YouTube, especially Google, they have a history of kind of bowing down to China. And China does not want stories getting out about the coronavirus and what's going on over there. Because if you've seen some of the videos that are coming out, I mean, right now, we there's different reports that there's, it's like, you know, death rates in the hundreds. Uh, and then the infected is in the thousands. But it is a communist country. So do you really think that it's that low? Do you think it couldn't be maybe thousands, tens of thousands? Who knows? But I can tell you this, uh, there is a major city with millions of people that is quarantined. It is the largest quarantine going on in the world that has ever happened and probably hopefully will ever since. But hopefully everything works out for everybody over there. But we do know coronavirus is spreading. Moving on. Curiously, YouTube recently even ran a promotional video related to a one coin event, which is still live and unreported. But as standards and monitoring are growing for all crypto users, content censorship is also expanding. What a crock of nonsense. Because here's the thing. We do what's called scam of the day. We do it every single day. And we report these scams. And it's not just me. It's like you. And I see how many people click on there. It's like hundreds of people, if not thousands. And uh, there's one video that's been up since January 25th. And it's a documented case. And it's still... I mean, it's reported by everybody and it still stays up. So if you've got uh, YouTube, I mean, we're helping them out policing their own platform and they can't do that job. I'm having a hard time of figuring out what else I need to do to get these scammers out of here. But if they're going to crack down on YouTubers, I need to seriously think about the direction of this channel and where I need to go because who knows what could happen. The problem with centralization is that they can shut you down at any moment, any time, for really no reason. So as time moves forward, I'm going to have to really start to think about a plan B. But this is going to lead me into our next story regarding Justin Sun and Tron. And again, I wasn't going to include this 
because to me it wasn't a big deal. It was just Justin Sun being Justin Sun. I personally, I mean, a lot of people hate him, <laughs> but I actually like him because I I feel that he's a great marketer. And yes, he's a liar and he's a thief, and you know you could tell you can call all that and say whatever it is. If that's true, is debatable. I, that's not for today's uh, topic. But I will tell you this: he's a great marketer. He knows how to get things done. And uh, there is three parts here that it talks about and is directly related to Ivan on Tech as far as censorship. So the first one is a minute long. And it talks about DApps, decentralized apps. Let's take a listen. Building on top of Trump. But explain the blockchain. The, the decentralized nature of what you've created here because I think for most people when you're talking about an operating system they go yeah 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 I get it but what makes you unique explain why this is unique first of all the privacy of user is not controlled by a decentralized operating system right. so today like for example Apple Google Facebook and all the large companies they control users data and the user's privacy. They can choose to suspend like user's account or release the user's privacy to other people. But in decentralized ecosystem, so we are just the system builders. We don't control like any user data privacy. It's all preserved by user themselves. For example, also the digital assets user have on our account system is also preserved by themselves. It's not like preserved by the system. So I believe this is a more democratic system. So it's and then he goes on with some other rants about utility and whatnot. But it was interesting just to note where he talks about the decentralization of Tron and the things that are being built upon it and data and how that relates to the social media platforms. Then he goes into more of that in a little bit, which I'm going to fast forward to it right now, and that's about 30 seconds. And it really kind of brings home the point of what's going to happen as time progresses. How do you fit with other platforms, other data sharing, providing platforms like Twitter, like Facebook. How do you see the evolution of them compared to what you're creating here? I believe right now the large company eventually will um, be evolved to like a, a even more centralized structure. Because in the centralized structure, it's easy for the company to monetize the data and also recommend as to their clients so that's why i believe the majority of the centralized company they will come to an end to be like a even the majority of the centralized companies will potentially come to an end if and only if people can see or realize the actual benefits of having a decentralized platform and i can see how this will all fit into the plan as far as tron and their their foundation because as far as social media platforms they recently purchased steemit which is a social media platform uh, that is built on the blockchain and now it's going to be under that umbrella of tron Plus, they've also recently purchased BitTorrent, which is a file sharing platform. So uh, we did a video about this uh, about four or five days ago where we talked about how Tron is gobbling up different companies. And they are really making a, a case for to do exactly what Facebook did uh, back five years ago or so. Facebook started out with Facebook, and then all of a sudden it uh, started to branch out, and they purchased Instagram for billions and billions of dollars and they also purchased WhatsApp on top of other different businesses and now it's underneath that umbrella. So I can see here what Justin Sun and Tron are trying to do. They're trying to bring everything underneath an umbrella into their Tron ecosystem and it makes a lot of sense especially if we look at what's going on with these different uh, cryptocurrency uh, YouTubers and what's happening to them. And this just isn't the first time. This is two, three, four times this has happened, and who knows what's going to happen moving forward. And the last thing I want to share with you guys is about his uh, sit-down luncheon with Warren Buffett. Now, I, I don't really care about what happened and, and what really Warren Buffett thinks. Remember Warren Buffett, he is an old-school investor. He's one of the most successful investors out there, but he doesn't really get tech. Remember, he passed on Google because he didn't understand it, and that's fine. Some people just don't understand technology. That's just how it is. But there is one piece of advice that he gave Justin Sun, which I think is super important for everybody listening to this video. So here it goes. In the next five to ten years. Whether it's investing or beyond, what advice did he give you? Warren Buffett uh, tells me, if you want to survive in the capital market for over 60 years, 
you need to be very cautious. You need to always prefer certainty over uncertainty. That's why when we talk about a lot of the investment opportunity, that's the thing he tells me. Uh, we always need to focus on the certainty, and we need to know, like, for the next five to ten years, what's like the most certainty in the world, and bet a huge chunk of the money on the certainty. And there you go. Bet a huge chunk of your money on the certainty. So, uh, if you are in this space. There is not much certainty here. It's a very speculative nature and it's very volatile. So the most certainty that I can tell you right now that's going to happen in the near future is going to be Bitcoin. Uh, past 10, 20 years from now, I have no idea. I mean, I don't, and no one does. No one can tell you. And if they do tell you, they're a bunch of liars. So with Bitcoin, what's happening or what's coming down the pipe is the Bitcoin halvings is going to happen uh, on around May 12, 2020. And past that, we've seen statistically or historically that the prices have dramatically risen over a year, a year and a half time frame. And then with all the different um, businesses coming in as far as institutional investors such as Fidelity, digital assets, or Fidelity coming into digital assets, TD Ameritrade, and then heck, even Van Eck is uh, making a case for Bitcoin. And uh, for me, like I'm in, I'm of a advanced age, and I can just tell you that um, Fidelity managed my 401k. So when you've got somebody who is an old school legacy type of uh, institutional uh, in investor. And you've got somebody who is like, well, I don't know about cryptocurrency digital assets. I don't really understand them. I know I've heard that they're used for money laundering and cartel and they fund terrorism. I don't like that. But Fidelity, well, they've done some things for me in the past and they've been around for a very long time. I trust them. So if they're into that, I trust that. And that's what's going to happen as 2020 and beyond moving forward. So I can just tell you this. As far as what is safe, Bitcoin is safe, I believe, right now. I mean, it's the safest of the most unsafe uh, volatile assets that we have. But for me, I've invested in Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Cardano, EOS, and Chainlink. And these are my six. And not that uh, your whatever coin that you're invested in it won't do well. These are the ones that I picked. So you can see that the top three are the ones where I put the majority of my money, but I have diversified. However, I have the three underneath that could potentially do well. I don't have a lot of money into it. And that's why I like to bet on sure things or as sure as it can get. And that's how I see it. All right, that's it for today's video. Thanks for sticking with me through the rants. If you've got a couple of minutes and you can help uh, help us do YouTube's job uh, by eliminating scammers, that'd be fantastic. And we'll go over the scam of the day. So first of all, um, to make this simple, if you don't understand scams, just treat everything like, like a scam and uh, until proven otherwise, it'd be fine. If you think that Ripple's giving away money, just go to their um, actual website their official website and say, hey, are you giving away uh, XRP? They're going to tell you no. Hey, Binance, you're doing an airdrop for millions of, of uh, Bitcoin? They're going to tell you no. And uh, it just doesn't matter. So just make sure you treat everything as a scam and tell proof otherwise, and you should be fine. Also, to get to this section of Scam of the Day, in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a little part. It's going to say, Scam of the Day. And that'll be a link right next to it. It's going to get you into this handy dandy uh, Google spreadsheet. And we've just got, we've done a pretty good work here. I mean, since January we started this, we've eliminated a lot of these scammers. We just got these four that are hanging around. This is my one that I do not understand why it's still here. Uh, these other ones are pretty much recent, so sure, I get it. Uh, but for this one, we're going to just try to eliminate that as fast as possible. So we click on that link. It's going to take us to the actual scam. We're going to look in the uh, uh, comment section. Looks like a scam. What we're looking for here in the description or in the video itself is something that's like a giveaway. Here's a giveaway here. It's uh, Here's where it says it. To verify your address, just send us 1,000 to a million XRP, and we'll send you 10,000 to 10 million back. That's an asymmetrical giveaway, and uh, Ripple's not doing that. Binance isn't doing that. Coinbase, Coinbase isn't doing that. No one's doing that. No one's giving you free money. So let's report it. So we're going to downvote it, which I already did about a thousand times. I'm going to click on these three dots here, bring up the report section. And from there, we're just going to say spam or misleading. Choose one. And it's going to be scams and fraud. This applies to links. Click next. And we're just going to say this is a scam. 
exclamation point and report. You're free to put whatever you want in there. Uh, that's just what I always say. And uh, you're done. That's it. So again, that's all we got to do. Uh, if you could do those four things uh, for us, that really helps the community because people are going to be coming into this space rapidly over the next uh, year to year and a half. So thanks for sticking with the rants. Um, and uh, I will see you on the next one. Also, if you like these types of videos, there's going to be two that are going to pop up. I'm definitely going to put uh, the one about the bull run, about how you need to take uh, your funds out and take profits. That's uh, what called dollar cost average and an exit strategy. The next one I'm also going to uh, link to is probably that Tron video uh, where they talk about all the things that are Tron is uh, buying up. All right. Thanks. See you.